Welcome to the three website conversion pillars presented by SiteTuners and Martin Greif, co-presented by myself, DJ Sprague. Marty is CEO of SiteTuners. He's been in digital marketing for 20 years. He's been doing CRO for 10 years, and he's author of Two Connections, Relationship Marketing in the Digital World. SiteTuners has been doing CRO for some of the leading brands throughout the country and the planet, and they're one of the largest and most successful CRO companies in the world. Without further ado, here's Marty Greif. All right, well, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, we're, um, we're gonna start off uh, on this discussion of the website conversion pillars. So what does it come down to? What it comes down to is it's, uh, it's not about you. It's about your website visitor. I mean, this is, uh, this is normal. People are used to you know, trying to make something work, but they stop focusing on, on the visitor. They work on their marketing uh, plan and they work on their strategy and the techniques that they're gonna use to get people to convert. So the most important slide in the deck all right, is this next slide, which is going to sound a little strange, but this is the most important slide in the whole deck, right? Basically, uh, the three pillars come down to what conversion rate optimization is. It's all about aligning user intent with the website experience the company has with the organization and your goals. When the three of those things are in alignment, then good things happen. And let me give you an example of selfishness and how to overcome selfishness so that you can kind of see how when we align that user intent with the experience and we align that with your goals, how good things happen. So with that in mind, here's an example about alignment. This is the before image on, um, uh, on a client that we did work with, all right? Uh, and I, it's the about us page. Now I can't imagine that anybody here all right, today is gonna argue about this next point. The about us page on any website is probably the most self-centered page on any website. Why? Because it's about the company. It's, it's all about them doing what we jokingly call, you know, the opera school of marketing. Me, 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 it's all about me. You know, so it, it, we make a joke of it, but on the about us page, that's what you would expect to see. And this is the before on an about us page. But by changing the about us page and focusing on the visitor, instead, the conversion rate for new visitors on the site went up by 31%. The average time on the page increased by 76%, exit rate decreased by 20, and this resulted in a lot more sales and more email signups. And I know that this looks like a little bit of an eye test, so I'm just going to blow up one section for you to see it. So if you look at this, and if you read the words on here um, about Blue Bungalow, they're me, me, me words the home of flattering fashion. We're so pleased you found your way here. The internet can be a little daunting if you've had a bad experience. You're in a safe place. Think of us as your friend in fashion. And it's like, it goes on, yada, 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 and it just goes on. But if you were a woman in Australia, and this is an Australian company, and they, they primarily serve uh, Australia. But if you're a woman in Australia, you're not gonna read all the words, right? We, we know what people really do, they skim. So what do they see? Flattering, safe place, your friend in fashion, feel confident you know, look your absolute best. They gave me my confidence back. And the whole page does this. And this is why their, their signups for their private Facebook group went through the roof, why their email signups went through the roof, and why doing this type of thing across their site increased their revenue by seven figures, all right? I mean, that's pretty significant. And it's all about aligning that user intent. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about the, the pillars of, of good website uh, design and, and, and conversion. And so before we dive into that, there's just one more point that I'd really like to make. And that is we really need to understand the economic value of what we're doing. All right. And there's a reason that I'm going to do this. Now, this is going to be a little painful. I'm going to walk through some math, one of everyone's favorite subjects. So I apologize in advance. Um, but let's say you've got an e-commerce site, all right? And let's say that for whatever reason, whatever you're selling is $1,000. I just use even numbers to make my life much easier. Let's assume that it takes 100 visitors to get one sale. That would mean that you have a conversion rate of 1%. If 1% out of 100 buys, that is a conversion rate of 1%. However, the value of a visitor, and this is where it gets a little weird, the value of a visitor 
you know, is $10. Now, how is the value of a visitor if only one person buys? Well, you've seen in Google Analytics that it says what the value of a page is and what the value of a visitor is. Really what it comes down to is if you know for a fact that 100 visitors out of 100, one's gonna buy and the average order value is a thousand, you could say, you know, and you can make the argument that every visitor is worth $10 because by the time you get through all hundred, you'll have made a thousand dollars. So if you want to generate a million in revenue, you would need a thousand sales. To generate a thousand sales, you need a hundred thousand visitors. Now that's an e-commerce site. The same thing is true, you know, on, on, um, on lead generation. This works on across all of this. But today we're going to focus primarily on, on e-commerce sites. So with that in mind, um, how do you increase the revenue by 50%? So let me give you some baseline numbers here. If your revenue was a million dollars, and I know this makes no sense because you've got cost of goods sold, but for the sake of argument, just humor me, all right? What if your advertising was, was 500,000, so you were uh, spending half the money on it, your conversion rate was 1%, your net would be $500,000. So if you wanted to increase your revenue by 50%, what everybody on the face of the planet starts with is they say, all right, we're going to increase our advertising spend by 50%. So by doing that, what happens is we now spend $750,000 a month. Our conversion rate didn't change, but our net is now $750,000, right? That's one way of doing it. However, if you subscribe to uh, what I'll call the DJ and Marty School of Marketing here, um, if you increase your conversion rate by 50%, what would happen instead is your conversion rate went to 1.5, your revenue would be 1.5 million, and your advertising would have stayed the same at 500,000, so your net would have been a million dollars. So conversion rate optimization, by embracing the pillars that we're going to talk about today, what happens is you wind up saving, and, and this is key, you wind up saving that extra $250,000 month in and month out, which is $3 million a year, you know, if you're doing this on a monthly basis, right, which increases your, your, um, your net, not by $3 million, this would increase the net by $6 million, all right, because you had less costs. So with that all said, as the buildup, now we're going to get into the meat of, of what you need to do. There are three critical questions that, that every website visitor asks when they land on a website. And it doesn't matter if they land on a landing page, it doesn't matter if they land on a product page, it doesn't matter if they land on your homepage, they're asking these same three questions. And those three questions are, am I in the right place? How do I feel about this site? And what am I supposed to do here? And, and what's interesting about these three questions is, when I'm on your website and I navigate from page to page to page within your site, I'm still asking those three questions every time I hit a new page. But what's interesting about that is I may not only be asking those questions, but I'm asking them hopefully just a little less strongly. The first page I land on, I wanna know, am I in the right place? You know, how do I feel about this? Now, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but as we move through the website, we're still asking those questions, but we've satisfied them to some extent on the previous page. So why do we care about the question, am I in the right place? You wanna match the visitor intent with expectations and you don't wanna make your visitors think. So matching visitor intent, some of that has to do with your upstream messaging. You know, if you promise bananas in the messaging in your, your ad, you better be selling bananas on the page, right? As opposed to, I promise bananas on the, on, the, on the upstream messaging and I'm selling fruit when I land on the page. And you might say, but bananas are a fruit. Well, yes, they are, but bananas were promised and now you're making me think about it. And you really don't wanna make your visitors think. A perfect example of this is uh, solitaire diamond rings. So the Google's, the Google search was solitaire diamond rings. And then I see a really nice ad for solitaire diamond rings. But then I get to the page and I see a bunch of rings. And you know, here's the thing. While they may indeed be solitaire diamond rings, you know, when I was buying an engagement ring for my wife or you know, girlfriend, fiance at the time, you know, 
I wouldn't have known a solitaire diamond ring versus a different ring if it bit me, okay? I have no idea about rings. As a matter of fact, even though I got her a ring, and this goes back years ago, to this day until I actually wound up working with a client in the jewelry business, I wouldn't have had any idea what a solitaire diamond ring was, right? So here, this fails the question, am I in the right place? Let's look at a competing site. Same exact uh, search, solitaire diamond rings. And then there's a nice, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, add here or response, uh, you know, in the surf, solitaire engagement rings by solitaire engagement rings. But look what happens when I land on the page, right? Solitaire diamond rings were asked for, solitaire diamond rings were promised, and solitaire diamond rings were delivered, okay? You're not making me think about this. And that's really the key here. You really can't make somebody think about this. Now, I'm going to just to prove a point, this is not just on e-commerce sites. This happens on every type of site. So for example, um, if you look for New York homeowners insurance, and you all probably, assuming you're in the United States, and maybe you're not, but if you are, all right, you've seen the ads with Flo from Progressive. She's been on TV now. It's got to be 15 years. It could be more, right? So you come here, you see the Progressive Home Insurance, you look at this, but, but here's the question. You can assume that they sell New York homeowners insurance because they sell homeowners insurance, but do they sell homeowners insurance where you live in New York? And what's interesting about this, I can tell you multiple times I've done this, where I've, I've a good example would be for like getting cable. You, we all get frustrated with cable and, and the internet at our homes, right? So we look to switch every once in a while and you do a search and up comes something that looks exactly like this. And then you put your zip code in. And I've actually gotten messages that said, sorry, we are not in your area then why in God's name were you advertising? It's not like you can't block out, you know, zip codes. That's nuts, right? So, so it doesn't match the question, am I in the right place? On the other hand, this is an example of a client. Same exact, you know, um, you know search. But you'll now notice at the ads, compare top 10 home insurance, best New York, you know, and then in the link, New York Home Insurance, top rated New York. And what do I land on? I land on a site that talks about New York homeowners insurance. There's no question. New York homeowners insurance quote was what was promised. You know, it's what I asked for. It's what was promised. It's what's delivered. And when we did this here, this increased their conversion rate by 76%. So this is the idea of really aligning that whole, am I in the right place? Because if, if you don't do that alignment, all right, you're going to frustrate people. Now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second, and I'm going to look like an idiot, but I don't care, all right? Uh, uh, I'm married. I'm used to being told I look foolish, all right? So, but here's the deal. Uh, if this is the gas tank of patience in your brain, all right, and if this is full over here, you don't know before a visitor comes to your website, were they feeling really good, and they're happy, and they're full of patience, or... Did the dog pee on the rug and they're here? Did they fight with their boss and they're here? Did one of their kids do something? Yada, yada, you know, who knows what went on in their life? You have no idea how much patience they have. And every time you make them think, every time you're not answering that question, am I in the right place? You're getting closer and closer and closer for them to get frustrated and to bounce and leave. So let me go back to sharing my screen and we'll continue on. All right, so the next question here is how do I feel about this site, all right? And so a well-executed design boosts credibility. You wanna have social proof, security seals, basically all the stuff, okay, that shopper approved does, all right? And so this is the kind of thing that absolutely increases your conversion rate. So let me give you just a couple examples. Now, I did not know this, right? But it turns out that you can uh, buy grills online and these grills could be thousands of dollars, literally thousands of dollars. And if you look at this, a Weber E470 four Brunner grill is $1,899. So how do I feel about this site? Well, I don't feel real good about it, right? Because they're not 
giving me any kind of trust. Let's compare that to another site where instead they've got all sorts of trust, Inc. 5000, accredited business, you know, uh, 100% protected. They've got reviews on here. You know, they've got a phone number. So it's the same exact price. But my question to you is, which site do you think is going to have the better conversion rate? The one that's filled with trust or the one where, for all we know, and I'll, I'll just go back to this for a second, well, the one where, for all we know, these are three people in a cave in Afghanistan, you know, trying to steal your credit card. I mean, they're not. This is a real company. But my point being here, there is nothing on here that would make me trust these people. So I'm not going to feel really good about this site versus the other one where we've got all the trust embedded in here. So trust absolutely matters, you know. So. Here's another example or, you know, of trust. How do I feel about here? I land on here. I've got you know, trust guard. I've got shopper approved on here. I've got things on here that make me feel really good about this site, all right? Again, how do I feel about it? All of these things add to a feeling of comfort because at some point you want them to add to the cart. You want them to give you money, right? Well, if I don't trust you, well, guess what? I am not going to put my credit card in. I'm just not. And I got to tell you, we have tested this over and over and over again, you know, across literally thousands of websites, you know, and, you know, if you don't have trust on your site, people aren't going to feel good about it. You know, another example, all right, of some trust you know, on here. So we've got reviews again. We've got, you know, 60 day no hassle return, free shipping, verified by authorized.net. You know, so again, I'm feeling really comfortable about this, you know, and, and I'm, I'm looking at this and saying, you know what? I'm willing to add to cart here. Now, it doesn't mean that any site can't be, you know, improved a little bit. So, for example, on this site, and again, no disrespect meant to these people, they've done a great job here. But uh, the large, one, of the, one of the other trust symbols is a phone number in the header. Now, they've got a phone number in the header, but the problem is it blends into the background. It doesn't pop out. If they made that phone number pop out a little bit more, that would add even more trust to the site. So... The, uh, the, the, the two questions so far is, you know, um, am I in the right place? How do I feel about this site? And the third question here is, you know, the question, what am I supposed to do here? All right. And so you want to have visual emphasis that directs the visitor's attention. You want to have navigation and calls to action that are presented in a, a simple way. Again, don't make me think. You don't know what kind of a day your poor visitors had before they got there. I mean, for all you know, you know, uh, they're, 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 they've got a cold or God forbid they got COVID or something, you know, and they're surfing the web just to buy something. Don't make them think, make this really easy. So an example of this here is I look at um, uh, this site. This is again, another Australian site. Um, and I know I keep showing you some Australian sites. We're based in the US, but we have a bunch of clients in Australia for whatever reason. Um, but if you look at this, uh, you know, they sell all sorts of cookware, but but this was truly just a mismatch of, of all the things they could, you could potentially buy from them. As opposed to when we look at this, the after version, all right, um, there's all sorts of things going on here now. They've got a phone number in the top right-hand corner. They say when they're available. They've got a trust bar where it says free shipping, Australian family business trusted by 500,000 plus customers. They've got a really nice... Uh, answer to what it is they do, the largest range of kitchenware online, superior service delivered fast. And then, because this is the question we're answering, what am I supposed to do here? You'll notice that there's, there's category level images because I'm here to buy something. I'm here to buy bakeware or cookware or whatever I'm here to buy. And uh, let me just give you a couple, um, I'll call it just freebie tips, all right? And this is going to sound, I think the, the answer is crazy, but You'll notice like in bakeware, we have three types of tins there. We've actually tested, if you only show people one type of tin, like the flat one in the top left-hand corner, people will bounce off of there because they'll go, oh, they only sell the flat kind of bakeware. They don't sell the kind I'm looking for. I know that's insane. I know it is. But the reality is, and we've tested this, having category level images increases the conversion rate. Now we also did something else here. 
underneath each of the categories, you'll notice that there's some sublevel navigations to make it even easier for people to be able to, to um, you know, move on, all right, into the, the right uh, category to find the products they're looking for. So this makes it really, really easy uh, and it, to answer the question, what am I supposed to do here? And again, not frustrate people and not make them think. If I go a step further and I take us out of e-commerce again, and this time to a subscription business, you know, something where I'm signing up for uh, a course and there's some, I can, there's a couple ways to sign up for here. But if you look at the before image here, well, what are you supposed to do here? So what they do is they teach courses so that people can become certified to teach English in other countries, right? So course locations to date, offered in over 100 cities, free information centers, find your information center, where will you teach, you know, request your, I mean, oh my God, there is so much going on here. What is it you actually want me to do here? There's just, there's just way too much going on here for me to be able to very easily and visually figure out what the right answer is. So, you know, uh, the right thing to do here is to simplify. Now, again, this is the after. So there's all sorts of things on here. We've got a phone number in the top. You know, it's not popping as much as we'd like, but they really didn't want to have a lot of calls. But you'll notice we had not just a phone number, but talk to an advisor in the top right hand corner. You'll also notice that we got rid of all the crazy colors. All right. There was so much going on in that previous version, you know, and just just uh, just for, you know, just for um, you know, being able to see it. Look, we got red for find your course, green for info sessions with on a blue background, red on a blue background for country information, I guess a light orangey browny thing for request your information back. And there's more on here. I'm not even showing you all of this, right? And what did we do? We turned that into something that's really easy. Basically what we're telling the people is click the green button. Okay, I know that sounds silly, but we're basically pointing out that green is important. Click the green button, okay? And uh, and again, it's got trust like Facebook lights. They have 180,000 Facebook lights. They, they've got on the top, it says 71,000 certified grads since 1992, which shows that they've been doing this for a lot of people and they've been doing it for a long time, okay? And so that's all working and and it just makes it so much easier to be able to navigate. So in summary of all of this, all right, we really wanna make sure that we're answering the three questions. And those three questions are, okay, am I in the right place, all right? Because you wanna match that visitor intent with the expectations. And just as a side here, all right, the, 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 the upstream messaging, that upstream messaging could be in your Google ads or it could be in your metadata. So you really have to look at what is it you're saying in the ads? And when they land on the page, does it actually match? And I mean, really match. And the other place that people go south or, you know, and, and really mess up a lot of times is they don't spend as much time in, uh, you know, their metadata. And so they're making it harder for Google to decide what to put up there. All right. And so uh, you want to make sure that you are, are, coding your site correctly, making sure your upstream messaging is, 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 is matching the page. And that means that your visitors won't be thinking about what's going on. How do I feel about this site? All right, well, a well-executed design boosts credibility. So you, you don't wanna look like you've got a site from the 90s. I mean, I know where that sounds like I'm joking, but I'm not. Just as simple as, as having things out of alignment where the button's the wrong size or it's shifted over. If a site feels like it's broken in any way, shape or form, are you gonna put your credit card in it? Probably not, okay? And this is where social proof, security seals, transparency and available support, all of that builds trust. People buy from people they like and trust. And that's been a, a, a truism in sales for as long as I can remember. And it's a truism on the web too. You know, they only buy from people they like and trust, all right? And what am I supposed to do here? The last question, you want to make this really easy. I mean, at the end of the day, your job as an e-commerce person is to provide a product at a good value and make it easy for them to be able to buy this product. Don't make it so hard that they're never going to be able to figure out how to buy it. So your navigations and calls to action have to be organized and presented in a, a very simple and 
coherent manner. So what I'm going to do at this point, because we're, we're, we're doing this uh, kind of a tag team here, I'm going to turn this back over uh, to, um, uh, to DJ, and he's going to take you through uh, the next piece. All right. We often talk about uh, content is king in the CEO, uh, SEO world. We've all you know, heard trust is, or uh, content is king. But the reality is, why do we have content? What is the purpose of creating great content? The purpose is to create trust, right? That's why we have great content. Because if we don't create trust, the content really doesn't accomplish anything. So that's why I say trust is king and trust trumps content. Shopify says that trust is the first principle of conversion. Conversion optimization, a, a book on CRO, says that visitors won't buy from you or give you contact information if they don't trust you. Making websites win. When we ask site visitors why they didn't buy, we hear the same thing again and again, lack of trust. Don't make me think. Marty said this a lot. Don't make people think. This is one of the fundamental books on CRO written over a decade ago. And it says your first goal is to establish credibility and trust. Again, if you don't have a trustworthy site, a trustworthy experience, no matter what you're selling, it won't convert. And then Marty's book, which, which I love, is one of my favorites. He says, if you succeed in establishing your reputation as a trustworthy business, that is one of the most important things you can do. And I couldn't agree more. Uh, you absolutely must establish trustworthiness first. And then another book, Online Influence, reviews are the most important form of trust. We all read reviews. In fact, statistically, 92% of online shoppers read reviews, look for reviews before they buy something online. Online, as we know, can be a little bit of a uh, unsure space for a lot of people. If they've never bought from a particular website, they're not familiar with that vendor, that merchant. If they haven't bought a particular product, obviously they're not sure about the quality of the product. Is it going to do what I hope it's going to do? Is it going to be a good value, a good buy? Do they have a good warranty? Uh, is it going to arrive broken? Uh, if it doesn't work, do I get my money back? All these questions go through our minds when we're looking at a, a new website or an existing website we bought from before, but a new product or a new um, supplier of the product. So we're always concerned about these, these questions. So we looked at Amazon. Obviously, we've all been to Amazon. We know Amazon well. Amazon, coincidentally, uh, for their prime members, Amazon converts at 74%. So if you're a prime member and you go to Amazon looking for a product, statistically, you're going to convert at 74% of the time. Now, we started to wonder, why is that? What is it about Amazon? Yeah, they've got the free shipping, so do a lot of other people. So it's not just that. We started to dissect it, and we did a lot of studies. And what we found was that there are three critical components. The product ratings and reviews, the product Q&A, and the secure transaction seal. These address critical conversion questions at the bottom of the funnel. So what Marty was talking about was the critical conversion questions at what I call the top of the funnel, or the beginning of the buyer journey on your website, the homepage, et cetera. Obviously, you've got to have those issues addressed that Marty discussed on the homepage, product pages, and throughout the website. But once you get down to the actual buying decision on the product page, if you're not providing quality, authentic, transparent uh, ratings and reviews about that product from real customers, and you're not answering their product questions, does it fit with this? Does it come with batteries? Uh, does it have a warranty? Um, does it come in blue? Does it come in extra large? All those questions that buyers have, if you're not answering those quickly and easily on the product page, they will leave the site and find the answers somewhere else. Chances of them coming back are very low because basically they're gonna buy from the website that provides the answers to their questions. And then of course, at the moment of truth, uh, buy now, add to cart, if they don't see clear, obvious signs of security, a secure transaction where their website, or I'm sorry, their personal information and their credit card are not gonna be stolen, then they're not gonna buy, especially if it's a new site they've not bought from before. So having that secure transaction seal at the moment of truth is critical. So they know my information is secure. I'm not gonna get ripped off. 
comes to uh, find out that it's not just uh, obviously Amazon, but Home Depot, Lowe's, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, et cetera. All of the leading websites do the same thing. They've got the uh, ratings and reviews, the questions and answers, and some kind of a website security seal or indicator because they know and they've tested it themselves as Amazon has that you must provide these critical uh, points of trust and security at the moment of truth and throughout the website. So we decided to really quantify this and see just how important this was to the US uh, adult shoppers. So in July of 2021, we surveyed 600 US adults randomly, 45% male, 55% female, gave us a 95% confidence factor in our outcome. And what we did was we did a uh, AB uh, example. These were randomized, so there's no order bias in the survey results. We basically said, take a look at these two product pages and tell us which one you'd rather buy from, A or B. And again, these are completely randomized. So 50% got A first, 50% got B first, no order bias. What we found out was 88% said they'd rather buy from example A. Very interesting. Probably no surprise, right? Because sample A has the ratings and reviews, the product Q&A, and the website security transaction seal. Example B doesn't have any of those. So then we decided, well, would this hold true in a generic website, a website that nobody's ever been to because we created this ourselves for the purpose of the test. And we wanted to see if that uh, same outcome would hold true. Same idea, same randomization, same information. And what we found was that 91% in this scenario chose B, the one with the range reviews, the Q&A, and the website security seal. So why the 3% delta? Probably because they already had more trust in Amazon going in than they do with the generic site they've never been to. So again, with a website that people have not been to, those trust signals are more critical than ever because there is no familiarity with the brand or the product. So what we found was that when we asked people to tell us more about their preferences and why was it that they were preferring the one with the Q&A, the ratings and reviews and the website security seal, at the end of the day, they said, basically it's telling me that I can trust this website with the seller ratings. I can trust the product with the Q&A and the ratings and reviews and they can trust the transaction. So they were basically telling us in their additional um, answers to the questions exactly what we thought would happen. It was all about trust. It was all about creating those clear, succinct, obvious trust signals that they are used to seeing on the major e-commerce websites, Walmart, Target, Amazon, Best Buy, Lowe's, et cetera. If they don't see those, then they're going to be concerned. They're going to wonder, can I trust this seller? Can I trust this product? Can I trust this uh, transaction? So what we did was we created that. Uh, we call it our traffic and conversion suite. And we replicated that very look and feel that you see on Amazon and Walmart and Target, Best Buy, et cetera. And this is one of our clients, RV Upgrades, where we show the ratings and reviews for this product. We show the product Q&A and the secure transaction seal. If you hover over this, then this will pop up over here. It'll show you that this uh, website was in fact scanned uh, that day or the day before, depending on when you came to the website, because we scanned every 24 hours to show that there's no malware, spyware, uh, scamware, et cetera, to you know, steal your information and your credit card. So obviously trust goes up. I can now trust the seller, this product, and this transaction. The client said that when people come into the website through Q&A, so in other words, if they do a Google search for a product question, and that product question shows up in the uh, Google search results, they click on that and they go to the website, they convert at approximately 75% of the time. Now the average product page conversion rate across the web is about 8%. The average website converts at about two to 3% because a lot of people obviously never make it to the product pages, but if they make it to the product page, the typical website converts at about 8%. Again, I said earlier that Amazon Prime members converted an average of 74%. So here's a non-Amazon website converting at the same rate as Amazon. Why? 
because they're replicating the same three critical conversion uh, signals, ratings and reviews, Q&A, and website security. So here's an example of how our Q&A optimizes for organic search results, oftentimes in the featured snippet, which is at the top of the uh, organic search results, sometimes it's position one, sometimes two, sometimes three. But as you can see, it's very visually um, obvious. It's the largest uh, organic search result on the page. And typically it's the first one at the top of the page. Um, so it's the, it's the clearest target to hit. So here's an example of a actual search along with an Olympian heater run in a 20 pound tank. Here's the actual answer in the Q&A on RV Upgrades product website. So when they click on that, they go to the product page and they convert at about 75% of the time. So this is an SEO play and this is a conversion rate play. Now I like to say that conversion begins at search because if people don't see a good, clear, obvious, trustworthy, uh, organic or paid search uh, ad, they're not going to click and they're not going to convert. So conversion begins a search. If you can have the answer to the uh, public's question in the search results, they're already going to come to your website, what I say pre-converted, a higher propensity to buy because they're already going into the website with a higher degree of trust. And by the way, as you can see, this particular search result beat out Amazon. So this is a, what we call a Amazon beating strategy. Here's uh, another client that uses the uh, traffic and conversion suite. And what they have found is that by using our Q&A tool, they've increased their organic traffic by 400%. So RV upgrades, 75% conversion rate, which is a 900% increase in conversion rate from what they had before. And this is uh, ePest supply with a 400% organic uh, traffic lift by using Q&A. That's all I had. Um, I think it was, a, it was a great example of how trust and credibility throughout the buyer journey, throughout the website experience is critical. Uh, you've gotta be looking at every opportunity possible to establish trust, credibility, answer the shopper's questions, uh, be concise, make it look like a safe place to buy, a safe place to put in their credit card. Okay. So uh, without any questions, here's what I would say. If, if any of you uh, uh, have questions afterwards, we've got both DJ's email address and my email address on there. Um, and, and DJ, I don't know if you do this, but I always welcome people to connect with me on LinkedIn if they're interested. I assume you do the same, right? Absolutely. Well, DJ, thank you very much for, uh, for, for doing this with me today. I, I greatly appreciate it. And for all of our attendees, thank you very much for, for attending. And we look forward to seeing you on one of our future presentations. Thanks all.